Our last speaker for today is Rima Shatterjee which, from uh, University of Köln, which will tell us about cabling knots and overtwisted contact manifolds. Thank you. Um, and thank you to the organizers for having me. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about cabling knots in overtwisted contact manifolds. And all this work is joined with John Ignayad, Hun Kim Min, and Anubhav Mukherjee. So I'll start with our motivation. Uh, in contact geometry, uh, we have this nice dichotomy, which is tight contact structure versus overtwisted contact structure. And if you look at the literature, we'll see that uh, most of the studies these days are concentrated around the tight contact manifolds, uh, not really the overtwisted. And the reason behind this is uh, Eli Schwartz's fundamental wisdom. Uh, so this classifies uh, overtwisted contact structures in this way. So overtwisted contact structures up to isotopy are in one-to-one -one correspondence with homotopy class of two-plane fields, uh, which says that if we understand the two-plane fields up to homotopy, we understand overtwisted contact structure. So this not only classifies overtwisted contact structure, but also tells us that there are a lot of overtwisted contact structure. For every uh, two-plane field, homotopy class of two-plane field, we'll find an overtwisted contact structure. So not the same as the type ones. Uh, there is another result by Gong, which says that there are two obstruction classes, uh, D2 and D3 invariant. And those two obstruction classes completely classify homotopy class of two plane fields. So if we can merge these two results, that means if we know D2 and D3 invariant of a two plane field, we know over twisted contact structure up to isotopy. Um, so due to this result of the study of over twisted contact structure, it's like done basically uh, but the question is what about the knots in over twisted contact structures how much we know about those and that is what i'm going to tell you today uh, some classification and some structure problems of uh, knots in over twisted contact manifolds and some very brief background which everybody knows here uh, a contact structure uh, on a three manifold um, is a nowhere integrable two plane field and there's this dichotomy in contact structure, tight versus overtwisted. And for the purpose of today's talk, I'm, not, I'm completely ignoring tight contact structures. Uh, so that's why I do not have that uh, very common picture R3 standard. Uh, instead, I have a picture of an overtwisted disk. So here, along the boundary of the disk, we see that the contact links are tangents. Uh, and if we can find such an overtwisted disk embedded in the manifold, then we call the manifold overtwisted. Okay. Now, there are two types of knots or links in a contact manifold. They are known as Legendrian and transverse. So, a Legendrian knot, this is a local picture of Legendrian knot. That means pick any point on the knot, draw a tangent vector. That tangent must lie in the contact plane. Or, in other words, a Legendrian knot lies on the contact plane. Now transverse, as the name suggests, here if you pick any point on the knot, draw the tangent vector, that must be transverse to the contact plane. Okay. Now, classical invariants. Um, a Legendrian knot has two classical invariants. Those are known as the thurston benequin number, which is called TB in short and rotation number, which in short is called root. Now, uh, what is the thurston benequin number? thurston benequin number measures the twisting of the Legendrian knot with respect to the contact planes. So for non-homologous knot, first we fix a framing of the knot, and the framing is coming from the cipher surface, the cipher framing. So thurston benequin number will be the difference between the cipher framing and the contact framing. And the rotation number is that you take um, a tangent vector field along the knot and you compute its binding number with respect to a uh, fixed trivialization, uh, which is again, we need the side foot surface for that. So these two invariants are well defined for non homologous knots. Uh, there are also actually relative version of uh, these invariants, but I'm not going to talk about those. For uh, transverse knots, there is only one classical invariant which is known as the self-linking number. And for this also, to define a self-linking number, 
uh, we need the cipher surface. So for non-homologous knot, this is well defined. But again, there is a relative version that we do not need the cipher surface. Okay. Next is uh, relationship between Legendrian and transverse. Now, uh, in contact geometry, there is this very nice, there are nice techniques uh, which allows us to move back and forth between Legendrian and transverse representative of the same knot type. Uh, what are those? So if we have a Legendrian knot, we can always find its transverse push-off. Uh, so this transverse push-off is a unique operation. On the other hand, if we have a transverse knot, we can find its Legendrian approximation. Uh, but unfortunately, this Legendrian approximation is a non-unique operation. So we can find lots and lots of Legendrian approximation for the same transverse knot. But the good news is all the Legendrian approximations are related by negative stabilization, which is a local operation on a Legendrian knot. Okay. So this is like Legendrian transfer for any contact manifold. Now we would like to see that what is different in overtwisted. Now there are two types of knots or links in an overtwisted manifold. They, those are called loose and non-loose. So let's pause for a second and see like why this is different, why this does not happen in a, a tight contact structure. Um, so if we have a knot in an overtwisted manifold, we take a tubular neighborhood of the knot and remove it. So the complement um, can be overtwisted or it can be tight. And how is this possible? So if we have a knot which intersects every overtwisted disc in the overtwisted manifold, then by removing the knot, we are also getting rid of all the overtwisted discs and that the complement becomes uh, tight. And that knot will be called non-loose knot. So when the complement is uh, tight, and it will be called loose if the complement is overtwisted. You can also think of them as like a surgery uh, definition, like if we have a knot in an overtwisted manifold and we do a surgery and it produces a tight manifold, then it will be called non-loose. So there are a lot of ways to think about these knots. Uh, now, what we know about these knots so far. So the loose non-homologous Legendrian and transverse knots uh, are classified by Ethnaer. Um, and this classification result remains true if we in, in, uh, sorry, increase the number of components. So for links, this also is true. Um, now, like very briefly, if we have uh, this joint overtwisted disc from the knot or the link, so it doesn't matter how many components it has, but as long as it has a disjoint overtwisted disc, we can always apply a Liesberg classification result. And the problem actually boils down to uh, algebraic topology problem, like homotopy theory. And we can, we can prove that. And this is true for every non homologous knot and link. Uh, so what is different about non-loose? So when we are thinking about non-loose knots, how the classification is different. And here comes the difficulty. The only known classification results so far of uh, non-loose knots are the unknots. This is due to A.H. Berg's razor. And we have a partial classification result for torus knots. So this was by uh, Geiges Onaran. This is in 2018. And later it was extended a little bit by Irene Matkovic. And um, this is for negative torus knots. Uh, we do not, still do not have a complete classification of uh, non-loose torus knot, but there is a, a work in progress uh, with uh, Edna Min and Mukherjee. Uh, they are working on this, like classifying uh, all non-loose torus knots. Okay. Next uh, is the structure theorem of Legendrian knots, because this talk is on cabling and I should spend more time on, on this area. Uh, so a structure theorem is the behavior of a Legendrian knot under topological operation. So using these three topological operations, connect some cabling and white doubling, uh, we can produce a family of new knots. And we would like to see that how the geometry is changing under this topological operation or it's, uh, it's the same. Uh, so this study was initiated by Yitna and Honda. Uh, with connect sum of Legendrian knots in tight manifold. And in this uh, paper, 
they actually prove that if we know uh, the geometric property of the prime semis, we can also tell about the connect the, the resulting connect sum, which was continued, the study was continued with Lejandwin cable uh, by Ignar Honda uh, and later by Ignar Porteshi, where they work with Whitehead doubles. So there is a some amount of work in this direction in uh, in the tight contact manifold. Now, precisely, what do I mean by a PQ cable uh, of a knot type? This is the isotopy class of a knot of slope Q over P on the boundary of a solid torus uh, that represents the knot type. And here are the pattern. On the left-hand side, we have the positive cable pattern, and on the right-hand side, this is the negative pattern. Okay. Now, when Edna and Honda studied knots in S3 Z uh, standard, uh, they showed that actually the structure theorems uh, for cabled knots are not so simple as one expected, and this rely on this property known as the uniform thickness property or UTP. Uh, very vaguely speaking, what's this uniform thickness property? This is, you take the knot and uh, a neighborhood of that knot, which is a solid torus, and we can thicken, thick that, uh, thicken the neighborhood up to the neighborhood which represents the max T, uh, and like uniformly thickening the knot, uh, the standard, uh, the neighborhood, basically. Uh, and this result, uh, as I, in, the, in the next slide, I'll show you, this, uh, so if the knot is Legendrian simple and it satisfies this uniform thickness property, then the cable is also Legendrian simple and it admits the classification in terms of the classification of the knot. Now, what is the problem with this UTP property? The, pro the problem is that not, not a lot of knots satisfy this UTP property. For example, a knot does not have UTP property. Um, UTP and also uh, uh, negative torus knots, they have UTP, but positive torus knots do not. Uh, this study was actually further extended by Torsun, Etnaya Torsun, La Fountain, and uh, recently by Chakraborty Etnaya and me. Uh, so we know quite a lot about uh, cabling of knots in uh, tight manifolds. So our obvious question, is what about cabling knots in over-twisted manifolds? Can we produce a similar kind of results uh, for knots in over-twisted? Now, what is the problem? The problem is that for ca okay, cables of loose knots where we have a over-twisted disc disjoint, that's easy, right? So you take the knot because I already know that there is an over-twisted disc disjoint. I can move it away from the knot and then I can do the cabling operation so that the cable remains loose. So this is not a problem and it's also boring. What about cabling of non-loose knots? This is a difficult problem. And uh, what is the difficulty? That the tools and techniques that work very nicely in tight manifolds do not necessarily work for over-twisted manifolds. Uh, for example, this UTP property we have uh, in tight manifolds, we do not have this motion in over twisted manifolds. Why is that? Now, uniform thickness property means that we have a max TV, right? We can thicken it up to the max TV, the, the solid torus which represents the max TV. We do not have a max TV in an over twisted manifold because we do not have Benny Quinn inequality, which is giving us the max TV. Uh, so it fails there. Okay. And this is our first theorem. So suppose um, L be a non list representative of a knot type. And here I should mention one thing, that it is still an open question that if every knot type has a non list representative uh, in S3, it's, it's not known yet. Uh, so suppose I have a non list representative of a knot type. And if the cabling slope, which is Q over P, if this is greater than the thurston benequin number of the knot for positive cables, uh, then it will be non-loose. So positive cable is non-loose if the cabling slope is greater than TV of them. Um, so 
what is the strategy of the proof here? First of all, we realize the cable as a ruling curve on the standard neighborhood of L. And then we use converse surface theory. Uh, so in particular, we use this technique, which is known as the state transition technique and bypass attachment. So the state transition technique is due to Colin. And this is a very famous tool in contact geometry. There have been lots of work uh, in this area using uh, the state transition technique. And we are also using that. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, it's like very vaguely speaking again, this is a very technical uh, proof, but very vaguely. Um, if we have, if we assume that the, the cable is loose, that means there will be an uh, overfisted dis disjoint from it. And using the state transition technique, which is basically we have a topological isotopy and uh, we can break this isotopy into pieces where any two pieces will be related by a bypass attachment. And uh, using this, like uh, starting from the first state, at the end, we will show that this overfisted disk, which was disjoint from the cable, also becomes disjoint from the, uh, from the knot. And which will be a contradiction because when not is non loose, it must have, a, it cannot have a, a over system disjoint from it. It's very, very big, vaguely, whatever I say. Uh, but uh, this is our main, uh, main tool. Okay, uh, maybe I'll pause for one minute if you have any questions. So there's a comment in the chat. Oh. Uh, okay, let me see. Oh, okay. Oh, that's great. I didn't know that. Thanks, Anuma. Um, can you repeat what was the problem with the uh, uniform thickness in the over twisted case? Yeah, so uh, in over twisted, we do not have uniform thickness because uniform thickness is that we can always thicken it to the max TB representative, like the, the solid torus which represents the max TB uh, knot. Uh, but we do not have a max TB in over twisted. So there is no uniform thickness property in the over twisted because of that. Because the definition is the max TB, and we do not have a max TB here. Now, negative cables. Now, what works for positive cables do not immediately work for negative cables due to some technical issues. Uh, so what, how to solve this problem? How, how do we uh, uh, prove this for negative cables? That is, we put some extra conditions. So here is this theorem. This is a work in progress. Suppose we have a non loose representative of the knot type such that uh, it has a non loose transverse pushoff. Now, not every non loose Lagrangian uh, have a non loose transverse pushoff. So, if we have a, a non loose transverse pushoff, then if Q over P, which is the cabling slope, is greater than the Thurston Benefin number of the knot, then it will be non loose for, for negative cables. So, we have this small extra condition. Uh, but this actually the non-loose uh, Legendrian knot not having non-loose transverse push-off. The first example is uh, the unknot. So we have a non-loose Legendrian representative of an unknot, but there exists no non-loose transverse unknot. Uh, this is a result due to uh, Elias Fraser. Uh, so of course, of course, this this is not very surprising that for positive and negative cables things will be different because even in tight manifolds things are different as well. Um, so in last one or two minutes, maybe, I'll just give you some future work directions. So the first question is, it is well known that connexome operation does not preserve non looseness because we have some examples here. Uh, but what about, for if this is true for every case, like is this true that if we take any two non loose knots and we do the connexome operation, it's always loose. Uh, this is this is not known, and we also do not have enough examples in uh, this non-loose uh, knots. Uh, we do not know if every uh, like 
uh, for every knot, let's say, uh, for torus knots, we know that these live in this particular contact structure, non lethal representative. Uh, but what about the other knots? So you do the connectum operation, you get something different, uh, which is a non trivial connectum. Uh, you get a different knot, but we do not know if this is loose or non loose. Uh, so this is like a question, but maybe this is true that it will always give you a loose knot, but. Uh, there is like I, I cannot give you a reason why this should be true. Uh, the second question is the white double. So this was a question asked by uh, Baker Onaran in one of their papers uh, that if uh, you take a non loose knot and you do this white double operation, then it is always uh, a non loose. Uh, but right now we have no idea that if this is actually the case. If this always, if this is true, that means we have a new family of knots, the white double will always be non uh, But um, we have like no idea how to prove this. Or uh, I, I do not know of if there is any work in this particular direction. And I guess I'm like one minute over time. And thank you for your attention. Um, thank you very much. Are there any questions? A very nice question, sorry. Um, in, in the purely just smooth setting, uh, the classification of cabling knots is, is completely understood and, uh, and it, it all relies on the on the classification for the underlying knot, or uh, you mean the if the knot satisfies UTP, then it is completely known. But uh, not like there are other work. This was the first work due to Ignaz Honda, and then there was another work for positive torus knots because positive torus knots do not satisfy UTP. But then we have a classification for those knots due to. Uh, Bullen Tosun, uh, Etnayer, and uh, Douglas LaFontaine. And then it was further extended, very recent work by Chakraborty, um, Etnayer, and May. Uh, there has been more work in this direction in the cable where they kind of uh, use some contact with argument instead of this uniform uh, thickness property. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, they, for positive cables, yes. For negative cables, I don't think so. There, but I mean, there are scopes that uh, there can be a uh, work in, in that direction. I think negative cables is not complete yet. Uh, okay. So if you are given a, a knot, is there any algorithm which distinguishes between loose and non-loose? Uh, for a knot? Yes, so so so, so. Mean how how to oh how to know that if a knot is loose or yes or so, so can you do this numerically for instance so. uh for for a knot we know that non-loose a knot must have TV greater than zero so it's always greater than uh, zero so one two and there is no max TV so it can be anything uh, starting from one uh, the TV uh, but to distinguish between loose and non-loose we have lots of invariants. But uh, the problem with non-loose knots is that for non-loose knots, those invariant can vanish as well. For loose knots, obviously, those will vanish. But for non-loose knots, those, those can vanish as well. And uh, some coming from Hegar float theory, uh, and some are like from open book decomposition, uh, but they vanish. And if you want to see like, OK, this knot um, is non-loose or has a non-loose representative, if we have a nice contact surgery diagram, uh, by doing surgery on those knots, you can see that, okay, I'm doing a surgery on this knot, it produces a, a tight, tight complement, a tight manifold, then it will be non-loose. Uh, but technically saying there are right now two invariants, which are like, you can compute them. One is this loss invariant, uh, which is uh, Liska, Oswald, uh, Stipschitz, Zabo invariant, which is again coming from uh, knot floor homology. And that invariant can distinguish loose or non-loose knots. Uh, and there is also an invariant um, which is coming from open book, which is support genus. Uh, we know that a loose knot will always have support genus zero. So we can always put it on a planner page. Uh, but the problem with non-loose is 
you can still find a planner page for a non this non. So it's, it's difficult. Okay, are there any more questions? If not, then let's thank Rumeg.